please help me give a very, very warm and wild welcome to the Maverick, Quint Lears. <laughs> So I'm sitting in my model home, just staring out the window. And I hear this knock at the door. And this guy comes in, but it's in the sales center. So he doesn't come all the way in. He just kind of steps right in the entry, the, the threshold. He stays there for a minute. And he looks at me and he says, do you have a minute? I said, sure. He goes, how are sales? I give him the answer we always give. Sales are good. It's a little bit awkward, right? And then he goes, Okay, and he turns around and he walks out the door. And I'm sitting there confused, like, wait, what just happened? And who is this guy? And I recognize him and I think about it for a minute and then I realize, oh, that's our tile guy. And then I go from being confused to kind of annoyed. Like, why is the tile guy in my model home, in my sales center, asking me about my sales? Like, I don't go to the job site Hey, just check in, how are the tile? Okay, are you using enough grout? Is it a straight line? So I felt like this, what is this guy doing in my model home? Like this is my space. But truth be told, my sales were slowing down. See, it was the end of 2006, early 2007. And I went from selling like a whole lot of homes to a little bit less homes to not a lot of homes. And everybody kept saying, oh, it's gonna get better. But it got worse. I went from not a lot of homes to zero homes. And I'm like, well, you can't get worse than zero homes. It actually got worse than that. <laughs> I, one month, I ended the month working every single day with minus two sales. Like, how in the world do you work every day and end the month with minus two sales? Trust me, my wife wanted to know. <laughs> Here's what happened. I had zero sales and had two cancellations in the past. Sales that I could not afford to lose. It got so bad for me, I called a friend of mine, Mark. He was a friend from church. He was kind of a mentor, and I said, Mark, I'm really scared. Honestly, I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills. I don't know how I'm gonna survive this market. I don't know what I'm going to do. He listened for a little bit, and he said, Quint, let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought about becoming a firefighter? <laughs> See, Mark, Mark was a fire chief, okay? And I said, no, I hadn't, <laughs> and he says, he says Dude, it's, you're, it's crazy that you're calling me because tomorrow we have the physical tryouts. I said, okay. He goes, listen, show up tomorrow morning. Give it a shot. I mean, look, if you pass the physical part, then we can take the next steps. Think about it. So I hung up the phone. I said, all right. Didn't think much about it, honestly. But the next morning, I got all dressed up in my sales uniform, dress clothes. But on the way out the door, I just grabbed my running shoes, threw them in the front seat. I drive by station four. And sure enough, there's people getting out of their cars. They're, they're like getting in line. So my heart starts racing a little bit like, oh crap, like is this, am I really gonna do this? Well, look, what do I have to lose? So I got out of the car, took my dress shoes off, put my running shoes on, just hopped up, got in line. Now I gotta tell you, I looked a little bit strange because the guy in front of me was wearing like Nike, everything. The other guy was like all buff with like a tank top, Adidas, and here I am with a dress shirt, Dress slacks, dark dress slacks with white running shoes. But I'll have you know a minute later, the hoses, I was running hoses, I'm doing push-ups, I'm climbing ladders, and I passed the physical examination to become a firefighter, right? <laughs> and not only did I pass, I set a new record. I set a new record, never been beat. I was the finest dressed firefighter applicant ever in the history. No, nobody's even come close. I looked amazing. Now watch, I go over here, we're all in line. All the winners are set up here. The guy in front of me, he has a smile ear to ear. Now I'm like, my heart is beating, I'm sweating, but his smile makes me feel good. Like maybe this is a new step in the right direction. Maybe this, maybe this is not so bad after all. And I tap him on the shoulder and I said, congratulations, he says, Man, I can't tell you, this is huge for me. I said, how long have you wanted to be a firefighter? He goes, this is my dream job. See, I've been wanting to do this my whole life. 
I said, are you serious? He says, yeah, how about you? I said, like for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> so I have this belief. I have a belief that we have the power day in and day out to change the destiny of people's lives in a positive way. Okay? Not like huge acts of service, but just little interactions. Maybe it's a waitress. Maybe it's a cashier. Maybe it's a guy on the bus. But I think we also have the ability to change the destiny of people's lives in a negative way. And here I realized, this gentleman is walking toward his dream job at the same time that I'm walking away from mine. To make matters worse, to make matters worse, I kept thinking, you know, what if I beat this guy on the, on the academic part or the verbal part, and then I would be stealing his dream job, walking away from my dream job and stealing, changing the destiny of somebody else's life in a negative way. I decided, you know what? I can't do this. I turned around, went back to my car, put my dress shoes back on, and I went back to my model home. I sat there in the model home by myself for a couple minutes. I had to make a couple of decisions, three of them. Number one, am I going to stay in this business or am I going to get out? Decide. I made a decision that I was going to stay in this business even if I go broke. I love new home sales. The second decision that I had to make was, if I'm going to be in this business, am I going to be mediocre? Am I going to be average? Or am I going to invest in my skills? Am I going to invest in my craft? I made a decision that day that I was tired of being mediocre, that I wanted to become outstanding. I made it a goal to be a world-class sales professional. The third thing I had to decide was, how in the world do I get home and take a shower before the customers come in? Ladies and gentlemen, in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to share with you how I went from quitting, wanting to quit and try out to become a firefighter, to the national salesperson of the year, to the person standing before you today. But before we do that, I have a question. Who's excited to be at the International Builder Show? All right. I need to get some water. I'm getting fired up now. I didn't hear it from anybody. Here's what I want you to do. There's a few, not everybody, you guys, that was pretty good. I just, I sense a little bit of like, I don't know. I need you to turn to your neighbor and tell him to turn that frown upside down. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, hey, stop, stop, stop. Maybe, look, maybe that, maybe that was wrong approach. See, sometimes we just need a little bit of encouragement. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're awesome. Like, you are awesome. <laughs> It feels good, right? <laughs> Positivity. <laughs> guys, we got to be positive. Now, no, no, guys, calm down. I want you to turn to your neighbor. This time, no smiling. Look him dead in the eye and tell him, but you're not as awesome as I am. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now is my time. Today is my day. And now is the time for greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in new home sales. And if you're in new home sales, I want you to know that you are in the fastest growing, the most exciting, and the most lucrative sector of real estate. See, every other sector of real estate follows us. We are the leaders. Commercial real estate, they don't just start building commercial properties. They follow the number of rooftops, which means they're watching you. They're counting permits. For every new home sold, according to Richie Resources, 278 related goods and services are positively affected. Right? Why was that tile guy in my model home? Because if I don't sell, he doesn't get to do tile, does he? From tile to cabinets to granite to drywall to roofing, on and on and on. There are so many products and services. There are 100,000 people here at this convention, and they don't do very much, do they? Unless we meet with a customer and do our job. Even sales management, whatever fancy title you give it, I think it's a supporting role to the salesperson. Now, salespeople, wipe that smile off your face because number one, that sales manager can fire you. <laughs> and number two, to whom much has been given, much has to be required. With all of the people that depend upon us, with, with the leadership role that we've been entrusted with, we have a duty, obligation, and responsibility to become great to become skilled craftsmen, to become outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you three things that have been really instrumental in my life, going from 
from navigating a very challenging and down market, down and competitive market, uh, to competing at a very high level. We have levels of resistance. This is super simple. Number one is to our price. Number two, we have resistance to our product. And number three, we have resistance to us, the person. There's three Ps, price, product, and person. When it comes to price, I, I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, but I think we are about to get a tsunami of people coming into our model homes asking for deals, discounts, and incentives, and I have some bad news for you. It's mostly our fault, right? Because we're, de we're advertising deals, discounts, and incentives. So here are my two tips for price. Number one, sell from a position of power. Number two, sell to the year. Let's talk about the first one. I think we are doing our salespeople a huge disservice and we're setting them up for failure when we advertise the smallest house on the worst lot with no options, right? And then we go, I don't know what's wrong with my salesperson, Quint, they have a hard time establishing rapport. Yeah, they raised the price $200,000 from the base price, right? Another thing that we're doing, we're selling from a position of weakness. We advertise things like affordable, value. I, had this, I went to a builder the other day, it said the lowest priced new homes. We think people want value. They don't even want value, right? They don't. You know what they want? They want expensive. They just want to know why. I know that sounds weird. If you don't believe me, check this out. Turn to your neighbor and, says, turn to your neighbor and say, where did you get those shoes from? They look so affordable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that outfit. <gasps> you got engaged. That ring looks so affordable. We advertise like lots of standards in our homes. Right? What if I met you and I said, hey, I met your kid the other day. Pretty standard. He's a pretty standard kid. <laughs> value. Va everybody wants value, right? I'm going to go out on a limb, okay? I'm going I'm I'm to make a guess that if, you have a if you're staying at a hotel and it has the word value in it, that hotel probably sucks. <laughs> it probably does, right? People want expensive. We go to great lengths to own expensive things, and we, we just want to know why it's expensive. So here's one of my secrets. As much as possible, without being obnoxious and without being conspicuous, I use the word expensive. I'll say something like, welcome to our new model home. By the way, we are a little bit more expensive, but give me a couple minutes. Let me show you why. See, we're using a little, our appliances are a little bit more expensive. Uh, I know we're, see, the way we do our tile is a little bit more labor intensive. It's very expensive, but let me, let me communicate why. And then halfway through my presentation, somebody's going to be like, okay, uh, <coughs> sorry to interrupt you. Uh, how much is this house? I give them the price and they're like, trying not to smile like, honey, it's affordable. <laughs> but I started expensive and let them come up with it. If I advertise affordable, it's the wrong approach. The second thing is sell to the year. I want you to know that we have a huge advantage. We sell new homes, right? New homes are separate, apart from, and superior to, used in every way. As an industry, we love to make fun of car salespeople, don't we? Oh, they use, but they do something really good, don't they? They sell to the year. So I want you to sell from a position of power and start selling to the year, and it's super simple. Here's what you do. You start putting, as soon as you get back home, put 2020 on everything, on the website, on the flyers, and you train your salespeople to, as soon as somebody comes in, instead of saying, hey, welcome to the, is, welcome to the 1,800 square foot home, tell them this, welcome to our, new, our brand new 2020 model home. I know we're a little bit more expensive, but if you have a couple minutes, I would love to show you why. 2020, this is a great thing. Anybody comes in and asks me for a discount, I go like this, on a 2020? <laughs> Practice that, just do that, just do it. Say, on a 2000, on a... And they say, yeah? And I go, actually, we're trying to fight price increases right now. Let me see if we have any 19s. Oh, hey, check it out. I have a couple of 19s. Let's go look at them. I could ask my builder for maybe a garage door opener or something. I would recommend the 2020s. They're just a little bit better. Think in terms of used. Are you looking at used? Oh, really? What year? Well, I don't know. Might want to ask. <laughs> you wouldn't buy a car if you didn't know which year it was, would you? So price. We sell from a position of power, and we sell to the year. Super simple. Let's talk about the product. I have two suggestions for the product. Compete by the component and dominate used.
compete by the components. When I talk to people, I don't say, oh, are you looking at resale homes? I say, are you looking at used? And I stop there, rate it used. Because I want them to think in terms of the year, and I want them to think in terms of the component. Not used home, I'm talking about used. By the yard, it's hard, says Brian Tracy, but by the inch, it's a cinch. So if I put my brand new 2020 dishwasher against any brand used, it's going to win. Am I wrong? Right, it's gonna win. This is a beautiful thing. Somebody comes in, I believe this is the lost art of new home sales. The presentation and the demonstration. I believe that the separation is in the presentation, but the domination is in the demonstration. In order for us to compete by the component, we have to be very knowledgeable about every single component in our home. So how do we do that? I'm gonna give you a tip that's gonna make you a lot of money. Go back to your trade professionals, every single one of them, every single brand that you do business with, I'll tell you a secret. They have world-class sales trainers and they will train your people for free. Do it once a week, once a month. Sometimes they might need a little bit of provoking, like, oh, you know, I got some salespeople. They're just complaining about this brand. They don't really know why we're using this brand. I want you to know that I've been through training for the appliances, training for the, the faucet, for the windows. I went to the factory where the doors were being made and I had the owner tell me, Quint, this door is superior. Let me tell you why. I took that information and I put it into a product demonstration and presentation. Instead of saying, hey, guess what? Here's the kitchen. I will do something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is a, this is a new 2020. I know we're a little bit more expensive. Let me just show you the dishwasher. Okay, this is the brand new 2020 Ultra Quiet Energy Star stainless steel interior exterior with a heating element, high level shut off, built in garbage disposal. Oh, and guess what? It has a lucidity sensor. What's a lucidity sensor, you ask? Thanks for asking. A lucidity sensor is where it has this light that shoots through the water where it can tell that it has particles. And when it senses particles in the water, it flushes the water, fills it back up, and it keeps doing that until it's clean. It's a very smart dishwasher. But watch this. I shut the dishwasher. Give me a favor, press that button over there. Okay, let's go. Let me show you the living room. I have a question. Can you hear that? Yeah, me neither. See, our dishwashers are performing at a decibel level that's quieter than rain. See, we believe that a quality home should be quiet. Are you looking at used? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just curious, what year? Well, look, let's just take a five-year-old home. A five-year-old home has a five-year-old dishwasher, five-year-old stove, a five-year-old air conditioner that's not as energy efficient. Five-year-old carpet. What would you pay for five-year-old carpet? <clears throat> I wouldn't buy it either. Let me ask you a question. If you wouldn't buy those things individually, why would you buy them all put together? <clears throat> What's that thing called when you do that? Check this out. Well, Quint, I mean, what you gotta understand is my husband's pretty handy, he's a remodeler, so we're, we like what you're saying, but we're gonna go remodel it. Let me ask you a question, can you remodel your neighbor's homes? What, what is that? See, in real estate, there's a principle of progression. See, when you remodel your house, but not the neighbor's, then all the homes around you are gonna be pulling the value of your home down. Never thought about that. Have you ever thought about why they might be selling? I didn't think about that either. See, a lot of times people leave here, go put an offer in on a used house, then I get a phone call that says, Quinn, keep your fingers crossed because we're getting an offer. But the best part is they don't care about our old nasty carpet. They don't care about the outdated cabinets. This guy's a remodeler. <laughs> Let me pause here for a minute. Cockiness never wins. Arrogance always loses. I'm a big fan of humility, kindness, and caring, right? What I'm talking about though, so never be, used, be cocky, but if a person comes in and tries to compare my brand new 2020 model home with the used, oh, he's gonna get punished. Check this out, this is, this is a true story, this is a true story. This is good, check this out. This guy comes in my model home and he goes, he's like, hey, check this out. You need to start dealing. I need you to work on that price because my wife and I are about to walk out that door, we're going down the street and we're about to put an offer in the house. So if you want our business, you're gonna have to start dealing. I said, is it used? He goes, well, it's a resale. I said, what year? He goes, I don't know. Have you had it scanned? He goes, scanned? Hold on one second. I take out a urine detector. Oh yeah, it's a real thing, right? I give it to the wife. She holds this urine detector. It's like the ones that the cops use at crime scenes at like body fluids, it shows everything. She's holding this thing and she goes, she looks at her husband. She looks at the urine detector. 
she looks at the husband and she goes, honey, I'm tired of looking at used houses. <laughs> the husband, he says, he looks, he's like, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and he's like, he shakes his head. He's like, write it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have some fun with this, guys. We can dominate used houses. Changing the buyer's perspective. I believe a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So instead of trying to overcome objections and pushing against the customer, let's just change their perspective. I have a, I have a story I love to tell. Sometimes people say, look, we don't even care about the appliances. I just care about big trees. Big trees, they have big roots. Big roots can be really bad for the plumbing, but that's a negative approach. Let's look at it from a positive perspective. Think of your backyard as a brand new canvas that's never been touched, never been painted. You have a daughter, what's her name? Is it Juliana? What if on her birthday, you wake her up and said, hey Juliana, let's go to Starbucks, and you get her a little hot cup of cocoa, and then you afterwards go to Lowe's and say, hey, we're gonna go find a tree, which one do you like? Let's grab a little pink shovel, let's get some safety equipment, and then you go in the backyard and say, where do you wanna plant it? And she goes, right there, and you say, honey, not there, let's do it over here. <laughs> and then after you plant it, you say, you know what? That right there is the Juliana tree. And I worked very hard to own this home and I hope you're enjoying it, but the backyard's very plain and I want something beautiful to look at. And when I look at that tree, it reminds me of you and how you're growing and maturing and, and, uh, and, I want, and, and what'll, ha what'll happen is this. Every time you look out in your backyard, you see that tree, it's gonna spark joy in your heart. And 10, 20, 30 years later, Juliana's gonna be driving around and she's gonna say, Wow, that was my Juliana tree. I remember planting that with my dad. I remember planting with that, that with my mom. Now, when I do that, I typically get one of two reactions. The first one, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's good, honey. <laughs> yeah, I heard you were good, but damn. Okay, now look, I, that was a sweet story, but look, we just want our trees, okay? Or I have people that say, I never thought about that. That's, that's beautiful. I kind of want to do that. I wanted the trees, but when you put it that way, what I'm trying to say is that we can always compete, we can always change, and put a positive spin on things. Let's talk about the last slide. You. Me. That brick. That's us. That brick is us in the center. So when I, the market was collapsing and my world was collapsing around me and I was filled with t fear and terror, I realized something. I needed mentors, right? So, so I just started calling people. I would read a book and I would call and say, hey, I'm in new home sales, I'm new, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, can you teach me anything? <laughs> and was, well, okay, this is really awkward. Um, but I was desperate, I was like a man drowning. So just like this brick has two bricks on the bottom supporting it, I also want you to have Two, that symbolizes two mentors. On this trip, I want you to find two people that say, hey, look, I'm new to this business. Can you, can you be my friend? Can you help me out and coach me or give me some ideas? They'll love to do that. To the right and left, those are friends. In this business with the highs and lows, guys, we need friends, don't we? A lot of people stop there. That's what I did. See, I was at this conference and this guy says, people that are indispensable are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. The people that I think are great, the ones that I want to shoot to the top, those are the, people, th those are the people that can reproduce themselves. And I felt like I had climbed this mountain, and this guy says, hey, buddy, you climbed the wrong mountain. So I decided, hey, how can I reproduce myself? And I started finding new people and encouraging them. I started getting involved. I want you to get involved in the National Association of Home Builders. I want you to get your CSP. If you're in new home sales and you don't have your CSP, you're doing something wrong. Your master CSP, your CMP, your MIRM. I want you to get involved in the National Sales and Marketing Council. Attend the nationals. Give back. Be a part of this thing. Become well-rounded. Now. Here's my question to you. We have a decision to make. Are we staying in this business or are we getting out of this business? If you wanna make a decision to stay in this business, no matter what, if you love this business, I want you to stand up. And here's the thing, not, I want everybody standing up because not everybody needs to be in this business. <laughs> now, since we're in this business, since we're in this business, I wanna ask you, are you tired of being medi mediocre? Do you wanna become great? And I describe somebody as mediocre is somebody who stops learning. In this business, if we don't grow, we go.
right? Raise your hand if you want to become great. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're raising your hand right now, you're going to be just fine. Here's why. You're going to push, shove, grind, move. You're going to figure out a way. You're going to get those mentors. You're going to surround yourself with great people, and you're going to figure it out. I'm going to end with this. It's going to take just a quick minute. You guys can sit down. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I want you to be relentless in your pursuit of perfection, in your process, in always trying to improve, but I don't want you to lose the love that you have for this industry or the love that you have for your brothers and sisters or the love that you have for the customer. I want you to set goals, huge goals, goals that are so big that you're almost embarrassed to share them with other people. But in doing those goals, I don't want you to lose yourself, your identity. You have a beautiful, unique, special, one-of-a-kind self. Don't lose yourself trying to achieve somebody else's goals. I want you to investigate your craft. Study it like you're trying to become a ma have a master's degree. But don't hoard your secrets. You can be a team player. There's not enough loyal people that can be counted on. I want you to infuse joy in what you do, enthusiasm and passion. But don't be afraid to do the hard things, to do the things that are challenging. And above all, above everything, I believe we live in a very disconnected, dysfunctional, discorded world. Be a human being that brings other humans together, that, that brings harmony and healing into the lives of other people. We've been given a, a position of, of, uh, of, of power and of influence. We need to use it for good. Last thing, we don't trip over pebbles. We don't trip over the mountain, do we? No, we trip over pebbles. If we can learn to step over the pebbles in our path, we will make it to the top of the mountain. But here's the thing. I want you to go to the top, but I want you to bring as many people as you can with you. My name is Quint Lears. Thank you. Just Thank you, guys. Like